Sometimes we can take an equation with a known equilibrium constant and use that to figure out the equilibrium constant for a related equation. And when we do that, we just have to follow a few simple rules. If we ever modify some chemical equation for whom we know the equilibrium constant, there are certain things we have to do for that equilibrium constant as well. So three basic rules. First of all, let's say you reverse the equation. So we start here with a plus 3b gives me 2c, and somehow I've measured the equilibrium constant for this guy. Well, I could rearrange this expression by reversing it. So because this is a reversible reaction, I can also express it as 2c goes to a plus 3b. Now, because these expressions are different, they're gonna have different equilibrium constants. And more specifically, all I'm gonna do is take that equilibrium constant I started with and take the inverse, do one over whatever that number is, and I can get the equilibrium constant for this second expression. That's rule one. Rule two has to do with multiplying. So let's say I have this equation, a plus three b goes to two c, and now I rearrange it so I multiply everything by one coefficient. So here, to go from here to here, I've multiplied everything times three. So I have three a and nine b and six c in this second equation. Well, again, because these have different coefficients, my equation looks different, it's also going to change my equilibrium constant. Very, very simple, if I look at my original one, whatever I multiplied by to get my second equation, I'm gonna turn that into an exponent. I'm gonna raise my equilibrium constant to that exponent to get the new equilibrium constant for my new expression. So if you reverse, take the inverse. If you multiply, turn that multiplication factor in, into an exponent for your equilibrium constant. The third rule deals with having multiple equations that you're adding together. And we see this in reaction mechanisms. We've done this in Hess's law. Sometimes you can take two reactions and say, well, if this happened one after the other, I could add these together to get an overall reaction shown here. And if I have an equilibrium constant for the first two reactions, I can use those to get me an equilibrium constant for the overall reaction. All I have to do is multiply those guys together and I get the equilibrium constant for the whole thing. So if you reverse, you take the inverse. If you multiply an equation, you use that multiplication factor as an exponent. And if you add up chemical equations, you're gonna multiply their equilibrium constants together. So we can put all three of these rules together to take a set of two or even more equations to give us the equilibrium constant for a related equation. So let's look at this example. Consider these two reactions. So these two reactions we've studied and we've measured and we know their equilibrium constant. We want to use these to determine the equilibrium constant for this final reaction. So we say, okay, how do I do that? The first thing I like to do is go through the given reactions that I know the equilibrium constant for and underline the molecules they have in common. So if I see here, okay, I've got 2A in common and uh, I don't see B anywhere, so I'll ignore him. I have 3C in common. Second equation, uh, I have D in common. Um, and again, I don't have B, so I'm just gonna ignore that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare these equations one at a time to my overall goal equation down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna ask myself, for the molecules they have in common, do I have the correct number of them? And are they on the correct side? So when we look at this first equation, equation one, we have 2A and 3C, and we see that, first of all, we do have the correct number, 2A here, 2A here, 3C here, 3C here, so that's good. And they're on the correct side. A is on the reactant side, C is on the product side. So I'm just gonna leave that equation alone. I'm just gonna say check, he's fine. I don't have to worry about him. Now for that second equation, I have D in common, but when I go through my questions, it's not gonna be as simple. First of all, do I have the right number? No, I don't. I have 4D here, but I only want 2D eventually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply by 1 half. But then I'm also going to answer my second question. Are they on the correct side? And when I look at that, I say no. D is on the reactant side up here, but I need it on the product side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse 
this equation. So if I do both of those actions, multiply by one half and reverse it, I'll end up with a new equation, b goes to 2d. And now I see that I have the correct number and it's on the correct side. But I also have to modify this equilibrium constant. So I'm going to take my k and I say, okay, first of all, I, I multiplied it by 1 half. So I have to use that as an exponent here. Raise this to the power of 1 half. But I also reverse the equation, so I need to take the inverse of this number. So 1 over 1.64. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that I can, uh, I've now modified the equations, everything's on the correct side. Now I should be able to add up these two equations and they should be able to give me my final one. So we need to check that. So I'll, just to make it easier, I'm going to write my other equation up here. 2a goes to b plus 3c. I'm going to be a little lazy, leave off my gas signs. And I'm going to add these together. So things on the opposite sides will cancel. Things on the same side will add up. So opposite sides, b's will cancel. And uh, same side will add up. So I'll have 2a gives me 3c plus 2d. And that's exactly what I wanted. So check. So now to get the k for this, because I added up these two equations, I just need to multiply their modified k's together. So the first equation, I didn't do anything, so I'm just going to leave that as 0.5. Oops, left off a zero there. 0 0.0556. The second one, I reversed it and I multiplied by 1 half, so I took the inverse and raised it to the power of 1 half. And now I just need to plug this guy in my calculator and I get 0 0.0434. So this is the equilibrium constant for this modified equation, which I got by applying my three basic rules.